that's the way we do marriage right now. A lot of people will, will criticize me because I have been married for 27 and a half years. And they'll say, well, Rolo Tomasi sounds like he's very anti-marriage. I'm like, I am not anti-marriage whatsoever. I am anti the way that we do it now. So it's not that I don't think that in an idealized state, marriage is a great thing. It is. It's just the way that we're doing it now. And it goes back to your point where we're talking about how we're saying there's a guy that's on the East Coast and a guy's on, or a woman on the West Coast and they can find each other and they say, hey, I don't, you know, otherwise I probably wouldn't want to get with this girl. But because we have this shared connection, because we have the ability through mass communication to be able to, to find somebody all the way across the world, we're now in a global sexual marketplace. We're not in a local sexual marketplace, which would have been more like the 100 to 100 150 people right. within that with that particular township that's a localized sexual marketplace if that's all if you're completely cut off from you know the rest of the if relatively speaking cut off from the rest of the world your your prospects for marrying somebody or getting with that you know your high school sweetheart are pretty much limited to that to that local sexual marketplace now that we have opened up the sexual marketplace to be global with dating apps with you know what it doesn't even have to be that you can play world of warcraft and find some chick that you like that's across the you know uh, yeah. across the ocean from you right but so, you guys are ignoring my sorry i'm not ignoring that i'm just i'm, I'm just finding a, a roundabout way to to get to it i'm not saying that like you know the, the 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 religious aspect of it is is not something that we should take into consideration but what i am saying is that the way that we do marriage now when we're including the state in that there's uh, this goes more to your point there's all women have the full force of the state that is backing and, them because and, we're in a gynocentric social and I'm not, react I'm, to not, the numbers. I'm not ignoring what you're saying i'm yeah. saying mm -hmm. you're tell like the, the challenge for young men is be honorable and be noble and you can't read someone else's mind and they could betray you I mean, what i'm proposing and, and, what and i'm proposing all the power is in their hand today it's not that but every are you woman bothered will, by it's that any woman can but yes okay but let's let's deal with the numbers as they are what i'm proposing um scales to any size population in the world so so for i, I agree with the localism thing i'm a big localism guy states rights guy subsidiarity Leave that aside because like, I just want to hear people react to if you pray together 10 minutes a day and say, oh, you, you can't pray away uh, big problems. Well, of course that's true. But the numbers say it's less than 0.1%, one out of a thousand, less than one out of 1100. No one's responding to that. Everyone hits oh. you with one out of two. In other words, you're not going to get a divorce if you pursue the kinds of behaviors that lend to staying married. And I do agree that no-fault divorce is a complete catastrophe, but what if men, as they seem to be today, continue to pursue this contract, it's not a contract, with um, stupid tort feasors? If you keep getting it, I was in contract law for a while, if some man keeps getting into a, a bum deal it doesn't matter how good contract law is. If he keeps finding the worst tort feasors to enter into contracts with, there will be malfeasance. And that seems to be at the heart of it. Men say, well, I want this trapping of Christendom, which built Western civilization, Aristotle and Christendom. I want this. I want the single cell society, but I don't want to pray seven minutes a day, even though the numbers That's bear that That's not the out. issue that I brought up. The issue is- That's the one I brought up the, though. And so you made a point about getting married and all that stuff. And my point was, which you ignored, is that right now the weight of the state heavily benefits women and even encourages women to initiate divorces. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Prayer is not just- Less than one out of 1100 when you do what I propose. Prayer is so. not just a Christian thing. You can meditate with your woman too. Um, sitting, spending time with aligning mentalities is like uh, the way you mix. Mary means I don't think mix. that counts. Marriage. Um, I think in the survey, it was. I think it was just You Christian should try prayer. it because it works too. Uh, marriage I'm, Marriage I'm, means I'm to mix. It may, basically means it's a mixing of the soul in the religious sense. You're, you're like, blending but, the law, the the legal marriage contract is another concept so like you really actively do need to mix your soul with your partner if you want it right. to survive okay, like, and i think that's where prayer comes in it's an active process of blending consciousness let, let, let me let me address this uh if i went to anyone with investment investment advice and i said i got a great investment plan for you all right you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna buy into a company with a 40 to 50 percent chance you not only lose half of what you own, but you become homeless in, in, a, in a matter of uh, several years. They'd be like, whoa, 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 wait, wait, what, what kind of investment is that? No, 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 hold on, it's important. The, the chance is you will, you're, you're, you're going to uh, work alongside another person who will help you have a family and all that. With a 50, 40 to 50% chance, you are kicked out of your own home, lose half your stuff, have to pay child support, have to pay alimony, and strong possibility, you never see your kids again. 
and that's what's being proposed to young mm -hmm. men these days. Well, you agree. Mm -hmm. You agree with Rollo here. This is one of his big points. But I would gainsay if you went to someone and you said, "I have a one thousand one hundred and fifty-one out of one thousand one hundred and fifty-two chance that's of wrong. success." It's right there in the data. Forty to fifty percent of no. first marriages end in divorce. Never no, tell no, me no, the no. odds. No, no. I'm <laughs> saying if you pursue a very, very doable thing, mm -hmm. which is pray and i i understand a lot of young white men in america are apostatized christians that's that's what you're saying the reality but no, Tim, think, the hardcore I reality you're is a, you're, we'll come back we are come back correlation before and causation no, no i'm not i'm not i'm absolutely not i'm saying the question was the the broader prompt was what can be done that's doable that's within the reach of young men who are so bothered by these stats when you that they're less good stats because you're entering less search criteria Tim, have when you i'm ever, saying when i'm saying yeah if you right, consider so the broad buzz. population it's like one out of two okay so now you're talking what, about the population that is, pursues the course of action that tends to achieve long marriages you have it's to 11, 50, in one out dating of before you get married make sure she is willing to pray with you on whatever average statistic you are you are saying people should be praying mm -hmm. together and if she does over a certain amount of time then perhaps you have a trustworthy I think relationship we, i think we sure. also need but, that we, we need to also remember that christianity doesn't have a monopoly on marriage okay Right. People were getting married in feudal Japan. Okay, like marriage is not just a specifically a Christian thing. Right. So, I'm just talking to American men. I, I'm, I'm looking at I'm looking at marriage from a particular like it's a form more marriage in human societies um, is a formalization of monogamy. Is really basically what it is. It's like we need a ceremony to say that Joe is going to be with Sally, and that's and that's that. We're going to put a wedding ring on, so nobody goes hits on either one of these. They're already they're reserved. They're they're a pair. Like leave them alone. Let them go make a family together. Whether like I said, whether that's in feudal Japan or that's in you know Western Europe, makes no difference. We as human societies, we have always formalized monogamy, and we call it marriage. Okay. Now getting back to your point, have you ever heard of uh, coverture laws? Mm -mm. Do you know what a coverture laws okay uh, this was something i i researched when i was doing my fourth book which is religion there's a big healthy section in there on marriage coverture laws in the i want to say like the 1700s uh, 1800s somewhere around there coverture laws were uh laws that were uh that would put men in charge of their wives uh assets their resources so when feminists used to say well you know well they still do today they said well you know women couldn't own property they couldn't have their own money they couldn't go to school they could no they could do all of those things women had land women had money back then the problem is is if they got married which is what they had to do back then is that once they got married their husbands were now in control of that land and now in control of that of the of the the money like it could inherit a business from their fathers or something like that because under the marriage contract of the times it was a man was responsible financially and and even criminally if that woman uh, drove that that company into the ground, the man, the the, the husband was responsible for that. Uh, same thing with children back then. If the child was uh, in a was a criminal, the husband was responsible for the state of of that of their own children. So it's not that women couldn't hold. Uh, couldn't hold land, couldn't hold money. It's that there, the the contract that was marriage of that time implied something, implied a responsibility to men at that time that meant that they had to be very, very careful of that. And they would say like, okay, well, you don't want this family to go bankrupt because you're allowing this woman to still be in control of whatever her whatever her you know company was or whatever that land was. And so it tra it transferred ownership over to the man. What was happening at that time was that it, women had more rights, well, technically more rights and more maneuverability outside of marriage if they had land, if they had money, than they did inside because they would immediately lose control to that. The problem that we're having today is that we have coverture laws, but they're for men these days. Men have more maneuverability and more power over their own lives outside of marriage than they do inside of marriage yeah. today. Because if you go and you now think about this, if you have a business today, if you have uh, if you have debt, community debt, if you have a credit card debt, that now becomes the the debt of the marriage, not the debt of the individual anymore. So when you bring that into the marriage, now you're paying off her student loans. Now you're paying off her credit card bills for when she was in college. Now you are paying off uh, whatever your like the, the potential exists that if you have a company that you could lose half of your company in a divorce settlement. It's not just lose half my stuff, it's lose half my company and half of the investment that I have put into this particular you, thing just because you and, signed and, a marriage contract. And real quick, it's it's worse than that. I mean, if you look at Bezos and uh, Mackenzie, I guess she goes by Scott now, mm -hmm. she's uh, 
It, it, there's an interesting argument as an aside that she that many articles, namely leftist ones, argue she's a co-founder of Amazon. And, you know, I, I don't know to the degree to which she assisted Jeff when he was founding the company. Was it, it worth thirty three billion dollars? Forty point two billion. Yeah. Here's the issue. If she takes this stock in the divorce and then destroys it, Amazon goes down with it. Mm hmm. Stock stock is uh, ownership in a company is not just the value of the company. It's the ability to burn it to the ground. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'll, I'll jump to this real quick. 70% of divorces are initiated by women. Mm -hmm. So the issue that we see in, in the modern era, and I think a lot of young men, uh, you probably encountered this, talk, mm -hmm. uh, will tell you why they're not getting married. Women have a financial incentive to get divorced. If at any point they're unhappy, they could consider, should we go to marriage counseling and therapy and try and repair this relationship and figure it out? Well, then she looks at it and she says, well, I'm going to get the house. I can do whatever I want. And he's got to pay me for the rest of my life. Mm. There is a financial and there is a massive incentive and benefit. The reason why I think marriage is likely more often initiated by women, simply because women benefit from, uh, I'm sorry, divorce is more. They, they say, here are the reasons why women initiate divorce. I'm mm. like, no, 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 no. That could explain why women initiate divorce. It doesn't explain why they initiate divorce more than men. Mm -hmm. These articles say things like they have unmet needs or uh, whatever you know. emotionalist answer that they can get. Right. I'm like, actually, it's mathematically really simple. Men don't want to initiate divorce because they get kicked out of their homes more often. They don't mm -hmm. get to see their kids. They have to pay alimony and child support typically. And the women are more likely to because in their mind, if I'm unhappy in this relationship, mm -hmm. I can say outright right now I leave and I get taken care of. I don't got to work. I get free I'll money. I'll quote another stat for you. This is from like James Sexton's a good friend of mine. He's the divorce attorney. He's been on Lex Friedman. Oh, this guy's season. awesome. Yeah, he's awesome. You should get, I'll, you should definitely get uh, James on here. Uh, one of the things that if you look at the average age of first marriage right now for men and women in the United States, for women, it is now 30. And for men, it is now 32. Wow. So how do you know it's an incentive? I'll tell you, because the average duration of a marriage before divorce occurs is anywhere between five to nine years. Average is seven. So if the woman gets married at 30, she's 37 on average when she gets divorced just prior to when she's about 40, when she, when she's saying, you know, I better, I better shit or get off the pot. I be, I'm either yeah. going to stay with this guy or I'm not going to stay with this guy. By the and way, so 90, 90% of divorces are initiated by college educated women when you when we put that in the, the, <laughs> my fourth book is called don't go to college yeah and of course everyone agrees that um if you denude the statistics of all meaningful behaviors that could be uh that could curb eventual divorce yes the feminism is going to crush the men if, if so, you if you denude it of any kind of meaningful um uh, set of structures that a man can take as a as a patriarch as the leader of a home then uh, these statistics will will crush any of those men who are uh, not attempting to take control of the situation well, not, the, what, the, what are the conditions the problem that is lead? you're not going to out alpha the state that's what i'm saying it's yeah. like you're not like as it stands right now i mean it's great to i, I understand what you're saying I, from a spiritual perspective i get it but well, i don't from mean spiritually a, I, from, mean I mean i mean no but, but from from the perspective that we're in right now like people will ask me like, Rolla, when's the pendulum going to swing back? When are we going to get back to the good old days of the 1950s? I'm like, there is no fucking pendulum. We only go forward. You only go forward. For, you can learn from what was happening in the past, but we only go forward from here. I think one of the reasons why I have such a debate about marriage today is because we're still, like I said, we're still clinging to these ideals of the 20th century. We want to be like uh, our grandparents. Well, the, well, grandma and grandpa stayed together for so long and they really loved each other. And then like in the 70s, you're like, I was, a, I'm Gen X, right? So it's like, I was a latchkey kid. My parents split up when I was like eight years old, right? I'm used to that right now. It's it's like like just common, you know, I take it for granted at this point. But I shouldn't have to take it for granted. I should be able to say, okay, maybe we can do things in a better way. Maybe there's some maybe there's some like change, some tweak, some disincentivizing or some incentivizing to say, hey, you know what? Marriage ain't such a bad thing, but we gotta be able to disincentivize the idea of I'm just gonna I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna take uh you know, I'm the 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 retirement program that is marriage for women. We need to take away the incentives for that being a retirement program for women. We need to disincentivize being a single mom. I think what happens is when uh, when we look at like prior to the sexual revolution, you also have to take into account the the sort of the sexual mores that were going on at that time. My mother-in-law happens to be like from a generation that was prior to the sexual revolution. So if a woman became pregnant like uh, back in her generation, that was very shameful. It wasn't even a, a religious thing. It was just a something that society says, oh, well, you know, this this girl's 16 years old. We're going to do what's called putting her away. 
And what they would do is they would take that, they would take that girl and they would go and put her with her grandparents. She would either have the child and give it up for adoption or the grandparents would adopt it and say it's their own. Right. And then they would put her back in the family and things would continue as normal. Now in a post sexual revolution society, we have taken um, child rearing from a marriage based uh, model to a child support based model. And so now to be a single mother is something to be very proud of. Every Mother's Day, we're like, oh, you, you, I never needed a dad. You go, girl, you're, you're just as, as, a woman can perform exactly the same functions as a, a mother can perform the same functions as a father. But wait, so I don't, don't, don't want to be like my grandparents. What we have, what we <laughs> they have got affected, divorced. But what we have effectively done is we've made men superfluous. Did you? Made that they, they don't need, we, we, they're nice to have around, but we don't actually need them until, of course, they become something of a financial incentive so that we can, seven years later, get divorced and we can 